here, uh, the language that they speak in heaven is not lawful for a man to utter. So if they're speaking in tongues in the language of heaven, they're breaking the law, right? It's not lawful for them to utter that. I don't know, you didn't think that was funny. I thought that was funny. Uh, but what are these unspeakable words which it's not lawful for a man to utter that Paul heard? Well, I've got several ideas, and we'll save the best for last, at least I think. Uh, my first thought is, when you read the word lawful in the Bible, it almost always refers to what law? The law of Moses, if something is lawful or not. And so then I started thinking, well, what kind of words are unlawful? Well, blasphemous words are unlawful, aren't they? Doesn't part of the law of Moses say, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain? Wouldn't those be blasphemous words? You say, well, well time out a minute, Pastor. I mean, are there blasphemous on a regular basis have to come and report into God himself? And Satan himself, it says, is required on a regular basis to show up in heaven. I don't personally believe that this explanation is the explanation for the unlawful words, the unspeakable words that we're reading about here for a couple of different reasons. First of all, Satan and his host, yeah, it's true, they have to present themselves on a regular basis in heaven before God, but I believe that in, when they do so, they have to behave themselves. I don't believe, I cannot believe, God allows blasphemous words in heaven. The only time we read about words that are spoken in heaven, it's it's when it, it says things like, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Those are the kind of words that we read are spoken in heaven. But there's another reason why these unspeakable words, not lawful for a man to utter, can't be blasphemous words. That word unspeakable, uh, the English word in our Bibles is used three times, uh, two other places than here, and it always in those other places, speaks of being unspeakably wonderful, not unspeakably sinful. How many of you remember when Paul in 1 Corinthians 11 says, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, un indescribably wonderful, the gift of the Lord Jesus. We have a hymn based on Peter's verse when he says, we now rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see, when that word unspeakable is used, it's used to talk about unspeakably wonderful words. Hey, why would Paul boast about being caught up to the third heaven and earth and hearing blasphemous words? That doesn't make any sense. So what are these words? Well, here's a second idea that I don't think is correct, but I'll share it with you because maybe you think it will, is correct. Revelation chapter 14. Hold here and look at Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14. Now when you talk about boasting, I, I read a thing where there was a guy from Kentucky boasting about his state and a guy from Texas boasting about his state. You know, they're always boasting in, in Texas. And uh, the guy in Kentucky said, you know, we got... Fort Knox and the gold there, he says, you know, we got so much gold in Fort Knox in Kentucky, we could build a wall around ten, uh, te Texas ten feet high made of gold. I doubt that, but that's what he boasted. And the Texan then replied, well, yeah, you go ahead and build that wall, I just might buy it. <laughs> so that's uh, how big and rich they are in Texas, I guess. <laughs> Revelation chapter 14, let's begin in verse 1. <clears throat> Revelation 14 and verse 1. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand. And uh, if we skip on down to verse 3, we read about the hundred and forty-four thousand. It says, And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts, and the elders, and watch what it says about this song. And no man could learn 
that song, but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now, how many of you think that the, this song that they were singing was uh, the reason they, that no man could learn that song is, how many of you think it's because uh, the song was too hard to learn? <laughs> you know, as I try to learn new hymns uh, for us to sing uh, on Sunday, some of them I read and I look at it and I study them and I think, you know, this is just too hard to sing. How many of you think that the reason that only the 144,000 could learn this song is because they were just too dumb to learn new songs? I think that's my problem most of the time when it comes to some of the hymns that I think are too hard to... But listen, I don't think any of us are going to be too dumb in heaven. Might be so on earth. But how about, is it maybe they, that nobody could learn this song because they didn't have good enough teachers to teach them the song? I am convinced at least I tell myself this, I am convinced that I could have learned algebra if I had just had better teachers. It seemed like the teachers who taught me algebra, they, they just taught it until the brightest kids in the class said, oh, we're nodding and smiling and giving the right answers. And then they just moved on. And I said, what about me over here? You know? <laughs> well, I, you know I'm just having some fun because the reason that no one could learn this song not because they were too dumb, not because they didn't have good enough teachers. I believe what John is saying here is that nobody on earth could learn this song. Did you notice it says that the 144,000 were redeemed not from their sins? That was true. It says they were redeemed from the earth. When we go back to uh, Revelation 12, there's like a mid-trib rapture, a catching away of the 144,000. And apparently, this is a song that would be unlawful for any earthlings to utter. So then you just start thinking, well, if there's a song that it's unlawful for people here on earth to learn, maybe there are words that are unlawful for us to speak. And uh, uh, maybe it's something that we just won't learn until we too are redeemed from the earth. So if that explanation floats your boat, you can go with that one. But let me give you the one that I think is the best one. And looks for that, we have to go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I believe what Paul is talking about is this. How many of you remember in Colossians 2.16, where the Apostle Paul says, Let no man therefore judge you in respect of meat or drink. Now, you think about that. Think about what the law of Moses says about meat and drink. Go back, give you a little more homework assignment. Go back this afternoon in, in your Bibles and read Leviticus chapter 11. Aren't there a whole slew of laws about meats that you can eat and meats that you cannot eat? And if Paul stands up in Colossians 2.16 and says, don't let anybody judge you in respect of eating meats like that, isn't it against the law to talk that way? Sure it is. Those are unlawful words. And it's not, it's not right to utter. The Apostle Paul in that same verse says that it's, uh, you can't judge 